There is a growing problem in our waterways. It began along the St. Lawrence River in eastern North America and has now spread to the Pacific Northwest. Flowering rush has recently been listed by the Northwest states as a noxious weed because of its potential to negatively impact aquatic natural resources. Flowering rush is an aquatic weed that roots in underwater sediments. It has upright slender leaves with a triangular cross section. Yeah, it's a triangular leaf. It's a perfect triangle. So uh, even if it wasn't flowering, the flower is very distinctive. But you would know what it was by that uh, distinctive triangular leaf. The most important morphological feature of flowering rush is the presence of well-developed rhizomes. I was working as a research assistant at the biological station and we were trying to document the changes in aquatic plants in the area that's permanently wetted versus the area that's seasonally wetted. And we found the butamus, uh, this flowering rush, as far as, or as deep as 20 feet at that time. That was in 1986. And it was pretty pervasive across the whole North Shore. I mean, we're talking acres and acres of it at that time. Numerous infestations are developing in the Flathead and Clark Fork Rivers as far as 165 miles downriver from Flathead Lake. A riverbank landowner has installed a bottom barrier to allow use of his dock behind a gravel bar that is heavily infested with flowering rush. Well, it's an invasive plant. It's all over on the North Shore. Um, and it's very aggressive in its spread. Now that we've built this gravel beach and calmed the wave action, then this area will fill in probably very quickly with flowering rush. Unless there's some sort of a mitigation action to uh, control it. Flowering rush is a unique aquatic invader in that it is infesting previously unvegetated portions of the littoral zone of Flathead Lake. The littoral zones are areas of a body of water that allow light penetration to support vegetation. This zone can be down 20 feet in the clear waters of Flathead Lake or in reservoirs that are drawn down. Spatial modeling of the current infestations and potential future infestations indicate that flowering rush can establish throughout 75% of the littoral zone, which accounts for 9% of the surface area of Flathead Lake. This degree of weed infestation of previously open water is likely to induce significant trophic impacts and ecosystem cascades. Higher trophic level biological impacts have not been scientifically assessed. Flowering rush is not native to North America. It is an invader from the northerly temperate areas of Eurasia. Flowering rush was first noted in North America in 1897 along the St. Lawrence River in Quebec, then was reported to be spreading downriver by 1918 and was well dispersed along the St. Lawrence by 1938. In 1949, it was observed on the banks of the Snake River at Idaho Falls. The first Flathead Lake report dates to 1964 at Peaceful Bay in the northwest corner of the lake. By 1974, it had become extensively naturalized in Canada and the northern parts of the United States. In 1997, it was found in Silver Lake in northwest Washington. As of 1999 to 2007, flowering rush was known to have spread westward throughout Canada and most of the northern tier states. In 2008, an infestation was found in the Yakima River in Washington above its confluence with the Columbia. Although the flowering rush dispersing out of Flathead Lake by rhizome fragments is a sterile triploid, it appears that the Snake River infestation in southeast Idaho is a sexually fertile diploid that produces seeds as well as rhizome fragments. It's the, just the right size okay. for a seed if that's not a pollen uh, anther. I think that's a seed. The rhizome fragments are quite buoyant and float away with the currents. Wave action can deposit fragments on the shoreline and some eventually sink or if the water level is drawn down, the rhizome fragments come in contact with bottom sediments. Then if it is warm enough to allow plant growth, the preformed roots 
can quickly anchor the fragment and establish a new colony of flowering rush. Motorboat prop fouling and clearing redistributes fragments. Many docks and marinas are developing infestations, so it is obvious that boats are redistributing flowering rush. Individuals are using weighted rope throw rakes in attempts to clear flowering rush from around their docks and to clear ditches and other infested areas. However, mechanical removal methods increase rhizome fragmentation and promote further spread. The hydroelectric dam on Flathead Lake is operated to produce low pool in late winter and early spring. In a natural, unregulated water body, low pool occurs in late summer and fall. The Flathead Lake dam operation allows the exposed lake bed sediments to warm in early spring from solar radiation. This unnatural low pool timing promotes rapid growth of flowering rush, while native plants that evolved with a late summer low pool remain dormant. By early to mid-spring, flowering rush is forming a dense carpet on the drawn-down lake bed. Rhizome fragments are being discharged out of the hydroelectric dam on Flathead Lake and dispersing down the northerly headwaters of the Columbia River Basin. This northerly infestation has extended at least 165 miles downriver into Lake Pend Oreille in northern Idaho. On the southerly Snake River headwaters of the Columbia River Basin in the vicinity of American Falls Reservoir, the river is carrying flowering rust propagules out of southeast Idaho towards the Oregon and Washington reaches of the Columbia River. Spillwater from this canal system goes back into the Snake River at the American Falls Reservoir. Since I've been with the company for 11 years, we've noticed a, a increasing difficulty with, uh, with flowering rush in our, in our canal system. Uh, currently, we see you know, pretty substantial infestations in, in the bottom half of the system uh, in about 100, 125 miles of canals and laterals. Uh, we see complete infestation that, that can completely block flow in the canal. In the years that we've seen uh, infestations covered in the main canal and, and completely spread across the canal, we've had real difficulty delivering downstream, uh, but where we've had uh, as much as 10 to 12 days when we see no delivery on the bottom end of the system. In an entirely gravity-fed system like this, if I can't keep pushing that water downstream, um, I could be starving as, as many as 20 or 30,000 acres of, of uh, complete delivery. When we do have to mechanically remove it, uh, then, then we just see dispersal downstream. Uh, when, uh, when we have breakage of plants, it can get sucked into irrigation pumps, uh, causes uh, downtime on the irrigation pumps while we remove the pumps and, and pull the, the flowering rush out of the pump itself. As a, a Carriac Canal Company, uh, our operating costs are paid for directly by our shareholders on a per acre basis. Uh, our estimates of controlling this vegetation, the, this aquatic weed, full time uh, it would result in an increased uh, cost to our shareholders of a dollar per acre. Um, and in our case, uh, you know, we're estimating that to be close to $60,000 a year and uh, to pay for men, equipment. And, uh, and if we added chemical treatment in there, then we'd have to add the cost of the chemical on top of that. So uh, it's, um, and right now, uh, in our situation, a dollar per acre would constitute uh, about an 8% increase uh, per acre uh, annually for my shareholders. The Northwest Power and Conservation Council estimates that 5.7 million acres in Idaho, Washington, and Oregon are irrigated by withdrawals from the Columbia River system. Um, we don't really know much about how it impacts the ecology. Uh, on one hand, it could be uh, very aggressive in overtaking native plants and choking them out, but we don't know anything about what sort of an ecological impact, benefit, good or bad, that it, that it may have. And there isn't any really money or resources being directed towards that question. I think it's a very important question. We should learn as much as we can about it and its role in the ecosystem on the shorelines of Flathead Lake rivers. It is obvious that flowering rush provides ideal habitat for pond snails. There is a relationship between snails and swimmers' itch that causes severe skin irritation. Northern pike and bass are introduced fish that are adapted to vegetated habitat. These introduced fish are known to be depredating native trout and salmon in the Columbia River system. 
Northern pike are known to be occupying flowering rush infestations in the upper Flathead River. Preliminary studies in Flathead Lake by Salish Kootenai College and University of Montana researchers indicate that selected herbicides provide at least one management option. Well, clearly, any type of aquatic plant uh, that's going to interact with the flow of water, and which this plant is very good at, um, it's going to change that environment from moving water that's carrying suspended sediment to still calm water that will deposit the sediments. More of an issue maybe for sloughs in the lower river where it could uh, rapidly add to the sedimentation rates in sloughs and change that trajectory of uh, evolution of the aquatic plants to the riparian plants. Once again, it's a role that I don't know of anybody that's really studied, although we do know it's an important role in terms of how uh, riparian habitats evolve in river systems. Local ecologists and water resource managers in western Montana and Idaho headwaters regions are developing an increasing awareness of the extent and severity of this new invader. Funding resources have not been allocated to conduct a scientific assessment of the potential impacts of flowering rush on ecosystem services for the Columbia River Basin. A timely assessment of the current and potentially evolving future impacts may warrant management intervention to contain this new aquatic invader before it develops extensive and dense infestations in the downstream portions of the Columbia River Basin.